Understanding diversification. You know, diversification's a big word, and you know, I gotta be honest, most in the industry, most consumers and most in the industry, in my opinion, misuse that word. So what does it actually mean? What's it supposed to mean? Diversification, simply. People, people think you don't put all your eggs in one basket, but that's a little bit simplified. Diversification to me means you have a whole lot of stuff in your portfolio that doesn't move together. So if one investment zigs, another zags. That way if one thing is way down like stocks or stock funds, hopefully they're not all way down. Well, when we look at most portfolios that come into my office, the, the most common thing I see with people that are getting near retirement or already retired is that classic 60-40 or 70-30 mix. And what that means is 60 to 70% is in stock funds, mutual funds, ETFs, and the other 30 to 40% is in bond funds. And typically it's overwhelmingly traditional U.S. bonds. And that is maybe not as diversified as you think. Here's the reality. A, six, a typical 60, 40, 70, 30 portfolio, there can be exceptions, but your typical portfolio made up with primarily mutual funds or ETFs is still betting on the stock market. The correlation to the stock market day to day, month to month, year to year is very high. So you're still kind of betting on the stock market. The other problem is bonds are traditionally used to help stabilize returns in the short term. Because the idea is when the stock market is volatile, more money, more people are moving their money to bonds and it helps buffer the blow. The problem is when we invest at risk, you should be focusing on a longer term horizon. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out my video on understanding time horizon. Because investments that are at risk shouldn't be needed for years. Money you need in two or three years shouldn't be at risk. So we should be looking out seven or eight years, maybe 10 years on our risk investments so that short-term volatility doesn't really have much of an impact. We're just worried about what the, what's the price in 10 years. So when people add in the bonds, it helps stabilize things in the short term. And, and don't get me wrong, stabilizing your portfolio in the short term is important. The problem is you're adding in an asset class that in this environment with interest rates at all-time lows is probably doomed to failure over the long term because interest rates are really, really low right now. And you may have heard that interest rates and, and bond values move in an opposite direction. So if interest rates go up, bond values are going to go down. Well, interest rates can only do one of two things. They can either stay low. They're at historical lows today or the rates can go up, in which case bonds are gonna do even worse. And if rates stay low, they're not paying much. So now don't misunderstand me. I'm not, I'm not saying you don't need any traditional bond exposure in your portfolio. What I am saying is, number one, it doesn't give you as much diversification as you may real think. It may actually be you're still just moving up and down with the stock market, just maybe not quite as much. But the second thing is, measured over a seven or eight year time horizon, it could really hurt you potentially by having too much money in traditional bonds. But then what do you do? There's all kinds of other asset classes. When a lot of people say you can either buy stocks and bonds or bonds, it's really overly simplified because in the bond category alone, there are categories of bonds, for example, that can increase in value when rates go up. There are also bonds, for example, in foreign countries and mutual funds are usually the easiest way to do that, but that can help hedge the value of the dollar. So when the dollar goes down, they do well. Well, that's adding more diversification. And there are also alternative asset classes like real estate and energy and commodities that aren't real highly correlated to the stock market. So again, you're adding more things into the portfolio that when one zigs, another zags. Then when you have market conditions like we've had in the pandemic, Hopefully, you're not doing these wild swings as much as the stock market is. You know, you shouldn't just be invested in the stock market if you're near or in retirement. Maybe a person in their 20s or 30s maybe could, but not somebody near retirement because of that time horizon thing. So how long has it been since you reviewed your portfolio diversification? 
How correlated? Are you just moving up and down with the stock market? How diverse is it really? And are you using too many traditional bonds to hedge risk and create some stability? Have you actually measured any of that? Believe it or not, measuring past risks is actually a pretty good predictor of future risks. Now, we know it doesn't predict the future, but it's been pretty accurate. We also know that in the real short term, sometimes you know anything can happen in the market. In the month of March this year, everything was down. But some things weren't down nearly as much as stocks. But over time, diversification has always proven to reduce risk. You just have to do it in a way that's smart, that doesn't hurt you when you're looking at a seven or eight year time horizon. So if you haven't done a, a, a true portfolio review to measure your diversification and risk, that'd be the first thing I'd be doing right now with the way the market has responded since the pandemic started. Market's back up almost to where it was. Now's a great time to review your diversification.